Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. You can use the gradient editor to create a new gradient, edit a preset gradient, or delete a gradient. You can also modify the existing gradients, blending more colors that you like into the existing gradients. You can click the gradient sample that appears in the options bar after selecting the gradient tool in the toolbox to launch the gradient editor dialog box. So once you've selected the gradient tool, go up into the options bar and click the gradient sample to launch the gradient editor dialog box. To create a new gradient based on one of the preset gradients, click on the preset gradient that you wish to use as your sample. Now we've already selected the one called pink. You'll see the gradient used in the preset display at the bottom of the gradient editor dialog box and it's here where we create the gradient down in that area. But first you can type a name for the new gradient into the name text box. We'll call this pink 2 for now. After that you can select if you want the gradient to be solid or have noise by selecting your choice from the gradient type drop down. So let's look at the options that we have if we select solid. First we can select the smoothness of the entire gradient using the smoothness slider to set a percentage of the smoothness that you want. And we'll go ahead and leave that at 100%. At that point you create your gradient by manipulating the various color stops, opacity stops, and midpoints on the sample gradient displayed. The color stops determine which colors will display in the gradient. You can click on the bottom row of color stops to add a new color stop, right in this area right here. You can add as many as you like. You can delete a color stop by clicking to select it and then clicking the delete button in the lower right hand corner of the dialog box. To edit the color in a color stop, first click to select it and then click the color drop down at the bottom of the dialog box right here. You can select either foreground, background, or user color here. Or if you want to set a new color, then click the color sample instead right here. And that will launch the color picker dialog box that we've seen before where you can select a new color for the color stop. Of course, this works the same way as before. You can cl click in here and select a color, use the slider to select, and choose a color and click OK. Now note that if you want to change the position of the color stop in the gradient, you can click and drag it to slide it to a new location on the color stops bar. Also note that when you click on a color stop, you'll see a small gray diamond appear, and that is the color midpoint, and it determines where the color changes between the various color stops in the color stops bar. You can also click and drag these color midpoint diamonds to new locations on the color stops bar to change where the colors shift between the two color stops. Like that. If you'd like to add transparency to a gradient, then you must change the opacity stops at the top of the gradient sample, right in this area. You can add and remove opacity stops in the same way that you add and remove color stops. So you just click to add them. If you want to delete one, you click to select it and then click delete in the lower right hand corner of the dialog box. Now, if you wish to change the opacity level of an opacity stop, click to select it and then use the opacity slider right here to make your change. Now, this can add various transparent and opaque gradients to the gradient if you so desire. But when the gradient looks the way that you'd like, you just click the new button to save the gradient as a new preset gradient for future use. 
However, if you don't want to save it, you just click OK to go use the gradient with the gradient tool. Now, if you selected noise under the gradient type instead, you'll create a gradient that contains randomly distributed colors within the color range that you specify. You first set what's called the roughness of the gradient using the slider provided right here. The higher the number, the more color striations appear in the gradient. And of course, the opposite is true as the number is lower, like that. In the color model drop-down, you select which color model you want to use for the gradient, RGB, HSB, or LAB. We'll leave it at RGB. Then you use the three color sliders below to change the possible color range used for the gradient. So you just click and drag to change that, like that. To the right of that, you can check the Restrict Colors checkbox to prevent the colors from oversaturating. That's right there. And you can also check the Add Transparency checkbox right there to add transparency to the gradient if desired. Whichever you choose, again, once you have the settings the way you like, you can either save it as a new gradient or you can just click OK to go into your image, the selection we've made, and use the gradient that you just created. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.